Hey everyone. Now if you've used some sort of public Wi-Fi in a place like a, a shop or some public area, you may have noticed that before you can get onto the internet, you have to do some sort of login or at least click to some sort of terms of, and agree to them. Now that, that thing's called a captive portal. And while it's in that state, an unlogged in state, you can't get to the internet, but sometimes they allow pings to get out. So you might still be able to ping stuff. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use those pings to set up your own tunnel so you can bypass that firewall and, and just get straight out to your server at home and then you know, use the internet via your own means, which will help you bypass any restrictions they have on their, their service anyway. So it's gonna be a bit in depth, but um, just watch it at two times speed if it's a bit slow for you um, and see how you go. Okay, now I'm sure you've all used ping before. You use it to see if a host is there and it replies if it's there. But let's look into it a bit deeper here. What you can see there is obviously I'm pinging that address and I'm sending 56 bytes of data. And when it replies, we know it got there and back okay. But looking at that on the packet capture, you see more about it. So here's the packet capture of the ping I just did. And what you can see is the request went out and the reply came back, as you expected. But if you look at the request, that data, that 48 bytes, is a payload of data that it sends. And if you have a look what it is, it's, it's basically just incrementing the values over here, so it goes up sequentially. And the reply is exactly the same. You get the same thing back. So that's what it is. And what it can do is make that ping bigger. So if I go back here, do that again, but this time instead of 56, I'll make it, I don't know, 90. Okay, just send a few of those and stop it. And you can see now, you can see straight away the length's bigger. On here, it's showing the whole um, size on the wire. But down here, you see that the um, payload size is 82 bytes. And what happened here is it just added more values, like compared to the old one, which stopped it at, at 7 there. Now, it just, it just keeps going on. So that's what it does. Now, the other thing you might notice here is an ID. So the first one, this 78F7, was the first bunch of pings that I did. And then it just has a, a sequence saying which one it is. That's how it knows, you know, what it missed and whatnot. And when I started the ping the second time, it got a different ID, again, starting at sequence one. So that's, um, that's ping in a nutshell. Now, what we can do is change this payload. So that's the core of what an ICMP tunnel is. Instead of using this default kind of sequential bit of data here, what, what you can actually do is write your own custom data for, in that payload and use the uh, ping protocol to send it through a network. So that's what this thing's based on. Okay, so to set the tunnel up, you have a client, which is going to be my laptop, and you have a server, which is going to be my, my router at home. So client server. Let's pretend that says server. And they've got their addresses, you know, x.x.x.x dot x dot x dot x and y dot y dot y dot y. Sort of y. Okay, and they're just the normal Ethernet interfaces that you have, or whatever they're called. Um, it's just your Ethernet interface. That'll be my WAN one. So that's them. And when I run the program ICMPTX, what it's gonna do is set up a couple more interfaces on these hosts. So you run it on the server first, and you get a TUN0 device, you get a tunnel device. And on the server, it's gonna have address 10. Oh, my example, 10.0.1.1. And on the client, I'm gonna run it as well, and that'll be uh, its tunnel interface, and it'll be uh, 10.0.1.1. Two. Now there's a couple more things, well, there's a lot more things to do, but that's basically the gist of it. It sets up a tunnel interface in the server and the client, which provide the endpoints to send traffic through. So when the tunnel is started, it will go through the normal internet as ICMP um, in, in the form of pings, and it will pop out here. Now normally I have a firewall here which blocks pings, but um, I have to turn that off and do a couple of other things. But I'll show you that on the NetFilter um, diagram. So this is the path a packet takes when it comes into your host. It comes in here and just pay attention to these green areas here. So uh, don't even worry about the pre-routing one for now. Just we've got this input and forwarding hook. Now input is for things that are headed to this device. So in my case the router. So if a ping were to come in here it would go into the input hook and that firewall would either let it through or not. So I have to open that on the firewall here to let it through. But what I don't want is for the, the ICMP process on my router to respond. I don't want it to respond because it'll just respond with whatever traffic comes in. What I'm going to do is run the, app, run the application ICMPTX instead of the kernel's ping response. But I have to open the firewall here at the input hook to let it in, otherwise it won't get there. So I'll open that up, 
the ICMP tunnel packet will come in here. Um, the normal ICMP response will be turned off, disabled, and it'll instead be responded to and dealt with by this program. So just to show you, in my internal network here, at the moment I can uh, ping the router, okay, just normal host responds to pings. So if I go to that router, and just come up here, what you'll see, if I do sysctl uh, net.ipv4.icmp echo ignore all password in you'll see that it's not set that's pretty much the default position so I'm not ignoring everything which means it is responding so what I want to do is set that to, to one so it does ignore them all so now when I go back here and I ping that it won't respond but that's not the firewall blocking it that's just its process internally saying you know not responding to ping so it's not listening for them and that's what I want to do so to install the program it's pretty simple just do apt install um, ICMP TX and I've already done it so it's already in there but that's what you have to do so that's ready to go so now I just have to run that program as a server at this end so sudo for all of this ICMP uh, TX server 10.0.1.1 and that's it it'll just sit there it doesn't really tell you much but that's it now if I have a look at that interface, go IP link uh, show dev ton zero, it's down. There's not much set up for it yet, so I've got to do that. So sudo um, IP link set dev ton zero up, which will um, make it alive, and I have to set the IP address. So sudo again, IP address add 10.0.1.1 slash 24 for this uh, dev ton zero. So if I do um, IP address show dev ton zero, you see it's now got an IP address. So that end's ready to go. That's the server part done for now. So on the client, I've got to run um, ICMP TX and tell it it's a client and point to the, the server that's running the server end. And while that's done, similar to the other, I've also got to bring that tunnel interface up on the client machine. So to do that, it's similar to before, IP link set dev ton zero up and IP address add this time 10.0.1.2 slash 24 dev ton zero. So that's the tunnel up and I just did a packet capture while I was doing that so I'll show you that now to show you what happened. Okay so I've got the packet capture now and you can see the the ping from the source 8675 to the server which is 1234 and it's it just did this ping every second no response but it did a ping with no payload there's nothing down here. Um, but one thing I want to show you is that the ID is 711D and you'll see as I do this that's always the ID that this thing uses. Um, Sequence number didn't increment, it's it's a custom made ping, it's not a regular ping. Anyway, it contains nothing, you see the length here is 60 which is just all the other stuff without the payload, but you'll see a couple of ones here and you'll see they're bigger, so they have a payload and if I go down to it you can see what it is there. Now I know what that is because it's not encrypted, none of this is encrypted. That's actually the um, IPv6 when I started up the adapter. It sent a bit of a, um, a bit of data out there. So I'll show you that. If I just show you um, IP-6 address, you'll see the address for the tunnel. So even that it's IPv6, we can just look for this whole bit directly in the capture. So B2F5 AD29. And there it is there, B2F5 AD29 and the rest of it and the rest of it. So as I said, I know that's what it is. Um, it's an IPv6 packet, but I'll show you that later on when I actually look at the tunnel. In fact, I'll do that now. I just did a packet capture of the tunnel device as it appears on the router end, so I'll show you that now. Okay, so here they are side by side, and you can see you can see the heartbeat packets here that happen every second. They're the ones that say 60 here for length, but you see these four that were bigger here? They correspond to these four um, IPv6 packets that were tunneled through them. So what you'll see is, should be quite clear, all this data here is in here. 8F00 FBE2 will be here somewhere. There it is, 8F00 FBE2, and so on. So that's how it encapsulates the traffic. Now one thing you don't want to do is send ICMP packets down that ICMP tunnel. So don't ping through the ICMP tunnel because it'll just sort of snowball on. So here's one I prepared earlier, and you can see that it starts off, let's have a look at the payload down here, you can see that it's there doing whatever it's doing, and then the next ping that includes that plus the rest uh, gets added to it, so it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you can see the, the size here, bigger, 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 heaps big, so big it has to fragment until it ended up crashing the program 
So you've got to watch out for that. You've just got to be careful to not send actual pings down the ping tunnel. So here I've got a packet capture on the WAN interface and you can see the heartbeats from the ICMP tunnel uh, pinging away. But you can also see this request here that has a different ID and it's also got the standard payload. That's just the standard ping ping in the WAN interface and it got the standard response as well which is exactly what it sent back. So that's what a normal ping is and it'll just respond to that like the normal kernel ping would have. It's just that it, when it sees this um, pings come in with an ID of 711D, that's when it treats them as, as tunnels. Now back on the diagram, that process, the, the ICMPTX program, runs here. I want to avoid any possibility of it sending ICMP pings down its own ping tunnel to avoid that runaway that I showed you. So what I do is just set up some NF tables rules to block it. I block it coming in just in case it came in from somewhere and I also block it going out in case I you know, have happened to ping something and it would send it down the tunnel. So this is just a snippet of the uh, firewall rules saying if the output interface is tunnel zero um, and it's a ping request, drop it. So what that will do, given that the hook is the output hook, so back in the diagram, here's the output hook. And that rule just means that if I happen to start some ping from the local process, well, from that machine, and it's destined to go through the tunnel, that will block it here so it doesn't actually go through the tunnel. And I've got one on the input hook as well, on the forwarding hook, just to stop those pings if the tunnel's involved. So now that we've got that tunnel set up, you might have a, a host out here somewhere, or really anywhere, and you want to connect to it. So what you'll do is you'll have to have a route to that host. So if this address is something like z.z.z.z, um, you'll want to add a route to that from here. So here you'd do an IP route add, and, and that one down here, so z.z.z.z. I'll just make it a host for now. And you want to send that via 10.0.1.1. So when this client has a packet for that host, it'll go down there, go whoop de doo through the tunnel, and go through the tunnel and end up at that host. Now the source address will be 10.0.1.2. And for the return path, generally this would be the default gateway for that device. Default gateway. So this host on the return traffic, when it's looking for 10.0.1.2, so that'll just send it up to its gateway, which is the router, and it knows that it's back down the tunnel. So it'll just send it back that way. And there's your comms. Now, still none of this is encrypted. And as I just showed you, you can see all this stuff in the um, packet capture. So what I'm going to do is set up a tunnel with WireGuard between this client and the server going through the ICMP tunnel. Okay, so one here, I have WireGuard, and I want to do this by the internal address, obviously. 192.168. Let's say 10.254. The reason is I don't want to do it on the WAN interface because I have to put it through the tunnel. So once it's through the tunnel, I'm just going to access it internally there. So like I just showed you before, I have to add that route to WireGuard. WireGuard and tell it to go down the tunnel. So on the client machine, it's just sudo ip route add 102.168.10.254 by 10.0.1.1. Simple as that. Now I'm not going to get into the whole setup of WireGuard because that's out of scope for this video. I have done a video on how to set up WireGuard, so I'll put a link to that if you want to check that out. So as I said, I've got WireGuard here and it just goes through the ICMP tunnel to the other end. But what I'm going to do is run a proxy server over here. So just a proxy server on a host that's on my network, and I'm just gonna add its route, like the route to get to it, through WireGuard. So if you remember, WireGuard's route is through the tunnel, and this actual traffic route is through WireGuard. So that'll be encapsulated in an encrypted WireGuard tunnel, which will be inside the ICMP tunnel. Okay, what I've got here is a capture on the ICMP tunnel, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start uh, WireGuard at the client machine. WG quick up WG1. Should do the trick. And there you'll see a whole bunch of stuff just happened. So the handshake and the th keep alive and all the rest of it. A whole bunch of stuff started going through. So that's what I'm going to send all my traffic through to the um, web proxy server and whatever else I plan on doing. Um, it'll all be encrypted through that WireGuard tunnel, which goes through the ICMP tunnel. Okay, so I'm here outside Bunnings, as you can see, and I'm going to go over there in a minute with the laptop and see what the captive portal looks like. 
Okay, this is the captive portal, but I didn't get to do much because the signal wasn't too good in the car park where I was. But I did notice that if you try to go to some dodgy site, you just get this little message on the screen. All right, so here's one of the payphones, and although it doesn't clearly say that there's free Wi-Fi here, there is a logo on the top there with the Wi-Fi symbol. So um, I'll go back to the car and see what I can see about this thing. Okay, so I'm connected to it here. You can see free Telstra Wi-Fi, and it's actually five gig, so that's pretty good. So what I'll do now is start ICMPTX, um, client to the home server and that's there. Now in another window I'll just run a simple little script to set that stuff up automatically to bring the tunnel up and assign the IP addresses to it. So I'll just run that. So now you'll see I have the tunnel interface. So now that that's up I'm going to start WireGuard and here's a bit of the config that I'm using in it. I'm allowing the IP address which is the server back home within my network and the endpoint is my router back home. So I'm going to do WG quick up WG1, and that brings that up. Now, if I do a TCP dump on the WireGuard interface, you should see some stuff come up here. So now, before I look too closely at that, I open up the browser just on the normal, um, you know, interface that I'm connected to here, and you'll see it comes up with this captive portal. Now that's all good and well, but I don't plan on using that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the settings here. And what I'll do now in Firefox, in the proxy settings, um, instead of having no proxy, I've put it to, um, to use that proxy server, which is the thing at home. So now, if I go google.com, what you should see is all sorts of stuff flowing here. You can see it port 3128, back and forth from the um, server at home, and Google came up. So now I'd be able to do anything, even if, even if the dodgy stuff was blocked, I'd be able to bypass it. So that's ICMP tunnel. I did kind of laugh at this where it says secured by Telstra. Um, it's nice and open for you. So there you have it. I um, just wanted to show you what's possible with ICMP. And it, although the program's simple, like it's a very simple program to run, you do need a bit of networking knowledge to know what's actually going on. So you've got, as I showed, you've got this tunnel, that tunnel, you've got um, possibly natting that it, depending on what you're doing with your um, your wire guard um, you know you've got routes you've got to add you've got all these things so it's not just a click and go thing you, you have to sort of know what's going where and if you want to know what's going where do packet captures because it's the only way it's going to tell you you might be expecting one thing um, but the packet capture will tell you that that's not what's happening so do your packet captures don't be afraid of them um, it should just be second nature so anyway wanted to show you what's possible so remember if you can't be good, be good at it. See ya.